guys, thanks so much for joining. I found another article and it is about the rise of super fakes. So there is a lot I have learned um, since I published my video about rich women buying fakes. A lot I've learned about luxury just from working in the industry and a lot I learned about purchasing fakes. And I've learned that it's not about the bag. It's actually never about the bag. <laughs> So I used to work for Louis Vuitton and I've been sharing my experience of luxury goods because I saw that on the YouTubes, people were saying the quality must be going up because the prices are going up. So I had to come out and say it, that no, that's, that assumption is wrong. Working for Vuitton is not glamorous. It's a very toxic culture, very toxic industry. We have to deal with mean customers and mean managers. And the whole idea of luxury just promotes toxic social standards that make people believe that their worth is in a handbag. All this fell on deaf ears and everyone just wanted to know, because you work for them, can you tell us which bag to buy? So I guess I had to be neutral on the subject. Anyways, being in the luxury industry, I did not see the point of buying a fake bag as well, because I thought, well, they look so fake, it would be embarrassing just to carry one into the store. I did not really know that super fakes existed until I found that article. Now in that article, it states why the rich ladies buy the bags, but it did not state that they shamed people who did not have the real bag. My viewer sent me another article, thank you so much Flo, about the rise of super fakes. And this article, um, the author, Amy Wong, it's in the New York Times, this is what she says, these handbags, they are merely a hollow basin, exposing nothing individualistic at all. What it does communicate are affable ideas such as money, status, the ability to travel around the world, and the ability to afford this bag considering the markup. Now, other words that come up in this article, mass delusion, democratization of fashion, and inclusive exclusiveness. After all, it's a mass produced item. So what is the trickery? Is the trickery that holding a fake bag tricks people? Or is the trickery that this corporation tricked you into spending 10 to 20 times more than the bag is actually worth? Does a super fake expose the fact that the bag should not at all cost 2,000, 5,000, 10,000? Anyways, the article mentions Judith Thurman, a popular fashion writer, calling this idea of luxury inclusive exclusiveness. And younger consumers no longer believe it's taboo or unethical, but a big joyful open secret. And they often think that the fake thing is better than the real thing. After all, it's a mass produced item. It's not a museum piece. Does a bag give a woman more classy demeanor or does it make her a snob, a gatekeeper of luxury? I can have this, but you can't. So I got a bunch of super fakes and found out actually it was a lot of fun. It was actually quite addicting. But eventually this wears off too because it's just stuff. Granted, I was so excited about having a new bag for every outfit and yes, it is accessible. But when people compliment my bag, if I don't know them, I just say thank you and keep on walking. But if they're a close friend, I just tell them this is not authentic. But that's the whole part of my channel. My channel was created to educate people and literally it does not have to cost $5,000. Is it worth it to buy a bag for a fraction of the price? Yes. Is it worth it to buy the real deal? If it's worth it to you, then yes. So what this little experiment uncovered were people's attitudes. Yes, I love the thousands of people who commented, I have authentic and I have fakes and it's not a big deal. And there was a handful of this, I'm better than you. And you can't possibly be as good as me because you did not spend the same money I did. It was not about my bag is better than yours. It is, I am better than you because I am the moral person here. I'm so proud of spending my hard earned money on this bag. And uh, someone even wrote, you act like the uh, fake industry is all good, which is so bizarre because actually I hear I've been exposing that the luxury industry is quite toxic and not all good. Now, the truth is that these bags used to feel elusive, but 
Now that they are available, the pursuit, this is in the article, the pursuit is worthless. And the bag, does that make the bag worthless? So as I stated, I have to be subjective on the subject. I have to make an argument for the other side because I can see that if somebody paid a considerable amount more for this bag than I did, and we're talking like, you know, 10 times the amount. So I could see why somebody could feel a certain way or, you know, kind of be hurt or make an excuse about why my bag's better than yours or to justify spending the money. So I can see that because I don't do it to make anyone feel stupid. But what I can see as a former client advisor and someone who used to work in manufacturing, that these bags are expertly made with pretty much the same materials. And I can see that with my eyeballs. Remember, I used to work for Louis Vuitton. I used to work for the toxic ex-boyfriend. Okay, so I look at this and I know it's expertly made. So there's also the argument that child labor and terrorism is involved. Now, there are some fakes on the very, very low end that, you know, may not be made by skilled people, but some of these pieces are made by very skilled artisans. I can tell. It's like asking someone to recreate the Mona Lisa. It has to be a very skilled artist, okay? There is no substantial evidence about these bags supporting terrorism or child labor. Just think about it. Maybe it's a narrative created by the fashion houses, you know, how certain corporations have so much money that they can control the media. I mean, we support companies even supporting our basic needs, our health and wellness, our food and drink. Our own country supports organizations that exploit, bully, terrorize small businesses, small farmers, uproot families, uproot communities, displaces cultures around the world. Corporations and their money control the narrative to take money right out of your pockets and straight into criminals disguised as politicians, corporations, pharma, people who are here to help you in any line of manufacturing. There is exploitation at all levels from soaps to cosmetics, air conditioners, shoes, anything you find at Walmart, almost anything on Amazon, even bottled water. Anyways, I digress. Another point against the counterfeits is I don't agree with people trying to pass off their fake bag as real. Like even the manufacturer who is selling it to you says, this is not an authentic bag. You're buying a fake bag. So to try to like trick yourself or someone else to think it's authentic, like that's just, just taking it too far. Because honestly, the best way to be authentic is to be yourself and admit that it's not an authentic bag and actually don't care what people think of you, whether you're holding an authentic bag or not. Also, it is very unethical for you to try to sell your fake bag as a real one. And for this reason, guys, I suggest to never ever buy from fake book sellers. Fake book. I just said fake book. I meant Facebook. Freudian slip. Even fake paperwork can be produced. And I've heard of people baiting and switching their real bag with a fake one, showing you the real paperwork and the real bag, and then sending you the fake one. You don't want to deal with that because people are unethical. So unless you have been in the industry and worked around these bags, okay? I did not work for Chanel, so I can't tell about those, but I work for Vuitton. And I can tell, and some of them are very, very good. All right. So even the guy in this video. Of the perception of customers has also changed because there is a considerable markup for actual designer handbags, right? Mm -hmm. It did not cost the company $10,000 to make the handbag. So I'm wondering if consumers now have a lower guilt level in purchasing a fake. Is, did, have you found that? That's exactly right. Does this just expose the fact that you don't have to spend 10K on a bag and consumers are sick of it. They are sick of that game. So maybe the super fakes actually exposes the idea that bags don't have to cost so much. So another point that she brings up is that it's really easy to get these bags where it used to be elusive because of the price, the store availability, but now that they're available, does this make the pursuit of the bag worthless or does it make the bag worthless a lot of vloggers talk about purse piece 
And even now with my vast collection of authentic and inauthentic, I have enough things. The truth I found that you will never be at peace, whether you're chasing things that cost $20 or 200, because at the end, they're just material things. Now, lastly, do they hurt the brand image? Do they hurt LVMH? Bernard Arnault is still continues to be one of the richest men in the world in the top four. If you know really where the money's going, it's not going to the sales associate. They get less than 1% commission on each bag that they sell. It's not going to the designers. They, they cap off at a salary. It is going to the people at the top. And there are still people striving to buy these overpriced, yes, I said it low, overpriced handbags. So Bernard Arnault is not starving. I receive a lot of feedback, compliments, and hate for what I publish on my channel. People really get this upset over a bag. Yeah, as I said in the beginning with the very first article about the rich ladies buying the fakes, it's good enough for those rich ladies. It's good enough for me without worrying about the judgment. So don't worry about judgment, guys. You will never be happy with trying to please other people. So live, your, live for yourself. Just don't lie, cheat, and steal and hurt people and stuff like that. All that stuff is bad. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and please hit your notification bell. YouTube has changed their algorithm again. So even if you're subscribed, you might not be seeing my video. Thank you guys. Love you for the support. I know what you're going to ask to make a video about all these fakes that I have. So that's coming soon. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.